Okay, so today is gonna be part two of a video series that my wife and I created. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll leave a link in the description. But today's video, it's a continuing from the dirty little secrets of freelance design work. And again, it's not dirty secrets. It's just things that we didn't know early on that we wish we knew. And one of these today is often you're the plumber, not the architect. Now, I'm not disparaging plumbers. I think plumbers, plumbers make bank. They are vital whenever you have issues in your plumbing, that's the person you need. So I'm not disparaging plumbers. My point is, if you think you're going to be an architect and you end up being a plumber, you might be disappointed. That's the point. And even architects, I have been around architects and a lot of times they feel like CAD operators. And that's my point. As a graphic designer, your idea is not going to win the day all the time. You will be considered a Photoshop operator, the person who knows how to work illustrator, the person who knows how to work in design. And that may be discouraging for a lot of graphic designers out there. It certainly was for me early on in my career, especially early on in my career. As a graphic designer, you are given a, a brief and your job is to take that brief and you might get one or two little ideas that you can call your own. I did a logo years ago and I thought that the board of directors loved what we had done and presented. It was across the finish line. It was 70% my design. Well, that is until an administrative assistant stepped in and put her design sense on it. She changed the font to something that is god awful and she changed the logo from a lowercase to an uppercase, which made no sense because the logo icon was a lowercase and it turned out to be 70% hers at the last minute. In fact, it turns out that my designs were tanked and her designs were sent to the board because she decided that she didn't like the lowercase. And that's reality folks. Okay. I cannot tell you how many times that you present these beautiful logos that you've spent time on, that you've really examined the communication aspect of what the client has told you that they want in the design brief and you present it and somebody has other visions and your ideas get tossed to the side. That may be disparaging to a lot of young designers or any designers, even if you have experience. You put up with that for 20 years and you may blow a gasket here and there. So what is the solution? We know what the problem is. So what is the solution? We know that we're supposed to be bringing the client's vision to life. So what do we do about this idea that our ideas are not winning the day? I use templates. I use templates a lot. I'm not going to recreate the wheel, especially if the budget is low. If somebody comes to me and says, I only have $250 for a logo. I'm like, okay, so that means I'm only going to spend half an hour to 45 minutes on that project and you're going to get what you get. I'm going to give you three looks for $250 and then any changes get billed on top of that. So you can use templates as a way to hedge against your ideas, not winning the day. You do not have to recreate the wheel with every design. You're in business to be in business. You're not in business to wow the world. Those projects will come and you will have your day, but most you're grinding it out day in and day out. So templates is a quick way to help hedge against that. Okay. Embrace the role that you're a production tool. Stop fighting it. When I stopped fighting and I accepted the fact I'm just a warm seat in the Photoshop chair, it made my life a lot easier. I was able to sit down with clients and a lot of clients just want to stand over your shoulder and dictate to you their vision. I had a lady who I was uh, bidding on a freelance job and this lady lived in Florida and I don't live in Florida. I would have had to have flown out there. She wanted me to come to her house, use her computer, and she wanted to make sure that I knew how to design. And I thought, okay, well, I'm willing to be helpful, but you know, typically I work in an office. I work with other designers. I work with directors, marketing directors, marketing managers, printing folks. You know, I don't typically come to people's houses and do Photoshop in their basement. It just was a little weird and I drew the line and it, it's too bad. 
um, because I did a design on spec and it got completely tossed to the side. So what does that mean? Embracing the role of a production tool. Well, when somebody tasks you to design something that they have in mind, focus on refining your technical skills. Maybe pull out a technique that you've been trying to master and you haven't mastered. So that way you're still learning something and improving your skills rather than focusing on the outcome. Focus on the process on how you can learn and grow as a designer, your technical skills. However, the biggest thing is you have to find joy in meticulous details. I remember years ago when I was middle of my career, we created an ad and we all loved, loved it. Uh, the art director loved it. Uh, the two designers I was working with loved it. Everybody really liked it. We were showing it around the office. Everybody really, really liked it. Marketing director came in, took one look at the ad and typed in the phone number on the ad at the bottom of the ad and the phone number was disconnected. It didn't occur to any of us to test, to test the phone number. So that is going to be something that's a meticulous detail that you should learn to embrace. That's how you deal with the fact that you're a production tool. I cannot tell you how many times my wife as the marketing director that she is gets so frustrated when she sees basic grammar mistakes, typos, grammar mistakes, phone numbers and emails, pages that are broken on a website because you don't proofread, proofread. Those are meticulous details. Test the phone number, test the email. If you can learn to find the joy in these meticulous details, then you will have personal growth within the constraints of any project. You will find the silver lining in any situation. For example, if you're working on a project that has very strict branding guidelines, which I did up at the university, they have very strict branding guidelines. I read their brand guide and I started thinking, wow, I could produce this for two other clients that I have, one of them being my wife. I took a lot of the ideas and I was inspired to create branding guidelines for two other clients. So I found the silver lining, even though I had to follow the hard guidelines that they laid down, I was able to find the opportunity to take those guidelines and use them in a more open project. So find the personal growth within the constraints of any project. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling your hair out. You know, when people say, I don't know, just play with it, make it look pretty. Early in my career, that was a very disparaging comment that was very off-putting and I felt like what other business on the planet do you say that to? I have never said to my accountant, make the numbers look pretty. I don't know, just play with my taxes. But in our industry, you'll hear that all the time. And that's why you have to embrace the role of being a production tool. And that's hard for a lot of designers. And that's a dirty little secret that nobody will tell you. Nobody told me I had to learn this year after year after year interacting with clients. So you're not alone, but it's part of the job. And it's also very rewarding. You get paid to learn skills inside of Photoshop. And that's what I tell my kids. I would rather get paid by a customer to learn how to do that gradient, to learn how to do that shadowing. So see the opportunities. All right. Well, that's video two in this series. We're going to have four more. There's six in total. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you learned something. And if you did, leave a comment. And if you like the content that we're producing, go ahead and subscribe. That would be great. I certainly appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. You have a great day. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.